Hello and welcome to today's edition of I Follow Ipswich. And in today's show we bring you an exclusive, a first interview with town owner Marcus Evans. We spoke to Marcus before the Aston Villa game here at the weekend about his strategy for the club ahead, his search for a new manager. But first, we began with his reflections on six years in charge here at Portham Road of Mick McCarthy. Well, it's great to be here and uh, looks lovely out there. Pitch looks great, nice sunny day, pitch looks green. Nice day for them to pass the ball around. Above all else, I think Mick brought a stability and consistency to the playing squad, which was definitely missing when he took over. And that, um, well, in the first three seasons, that provided the environment which enabled our success. And uh, that's continued. I mean, today we've got a great togetherness within the dressing room. That's a testament to Mick's judgment on who he brought to the club. But that isn't maintained just by bringing in the right type of person, it's to do with leadership day in, day out, which kept a happy dressing room. And that was kept whether the players were in the team, whether they weren't in the team. And those man management skills are certainly something that I'm going to be looking for in his replacement. I know you rang me on the Tuesday night and said that you were speaking to Mick on the Wednesday and that it would come to a head about whether he's going to stay or not. Did you get, were you ever close to offering him a new deal? And if you did, do you think Mick might, be, might have signed it or would he not signed it? Look, it was so obvious by the time Mick and I sat down a few weeks ago. It was 100% clear to both of us that his role had run its course. He'd done a great job ever since he came in and he leaves the club in a stronger place than when he joined it. But uh, it was so clear that the time was right for a new person to take up the challenge that that just didn't really come into our discussion at all. That's the past, the future. Everyone wants to know what you're looking for in the next Ipswich Town Manager. It's a big decision for you. What, what's your blueprint for the new boss of Portland Road? Yeah, look, it's a big challenge and it's a big issue for me today to find the right person. Um, I think before I talk about that process, it's probably more important just to think about where we are today as a club compared to six years ago. What we needed six years ago from a manager is quite different, I think, from what we need today. Round holes and round pegs come to mind. So let's step back to when Mick joined us. Um, the academy, it wasn't really delivering the talent into the first team, which is part of our overall plan. Scouting was very inconsistent. It wasn't delivering the players that we needed to build the team capable of delivering any level of consistent performance. And even the backroom areas, such as sports science, it was at best uh, you know, fledgling at the time. And also, if you go back six years, we were just entering a new era of parachute payments. Um, so that meant we needed somebody who could really wheel and deal in the marketplace. And we needed a manager who, at that time, could get to grips with all of those areas. I think the club today is in a far better place and uh, for example since we brought Brian Klug back to the clubs we've established ourselves with an excellent academy. It's probably one of the highest regarded academies outside of say the long term as in the Premiership. And that playing style philosophy that Brian and his team have developed has enabled us to bring players through to the first team where they then get hardened pretty quickly to the realities of the Championship. And that uh, it's also seen many of them representing their countries, several of the current squad having represented England. So the new manager is going to be able to rely on a developing t pool of homegrown talent that wasn't really with us, certainly six years ago. Um, from the scouting side, our network has really developed and we've been consistently able to identify developing talent. Look recently at Barry Cotter. On the other hand, we've got experienced, affordable talent, such as Emir, Joe Garner, Martin Waghorn last year. Um, on top of that, we've continued to sign some excellent loan signings, people like Tom Lawrence last season, more recently Bursant, Callum, Cameron. And then we've got emerging talent we've identified, like Grant Ward and Adam Webster. So the whole scouting network is very different and so much better than the structure that Mick took over a, a few years ago. Sports science also has come on leaps and bounds over the last few years. We've made a huge investment at the academy level and development squad level in sports science. And a change of manager is going to be able to bring a, a reorganisation of sports science. So rather than as it is historically, a department which has 
looked after individual squads, we're now going to be able to deploy sports science across the whole squad. So the new manager, rather than being expected to uh, have to bring in their own teams or use their experience in these areas, is going to be able to, in short, rely upon working with the club's existing support teams, let them know their needs and uh, rely upon them to deliver the support needed in their area of specialisation. So the manager is left free to work on playing style, the coaching required to support that style, tactics as well as man management. And football, like many walks of life, has moved on over the last few years. And whilst many of the management attributes are the same today as they were in the past, there's also a lot of new things that managers should be undertaking. And we want to be progressive and we want to look for a manager that embraces the best of old and new. So look, that's a long-winded way of trying to get to your question, but going back to your question, I'm going to look for a manager who ticks these boxes and through a process of interviewing and speaking with those that know and have worked with the applicants, I can get down to my final options. I'm not going to prejudge a manager. They could be young, they could be older, they could be experienced at winning promotion to the Premiership or not. But overall, I want to find someone that buys into the club's plans. And to be clear on that, that's based upon the five-point plan which I announced a while ago. And that I feel brings Ipswich the best opportunity for promotion. And it includes bringing players through from the academy, developing a team to play attractive and exciting football, and achieving this within a competitive wage budget, which is going to be below many of the parachute clubs in our division. It's going to take some time, and I expect to make an appointment towards the end of May or early in June, I would have thought, something like that. It's about winning football matches at the end of the day, but there has been some criticism about the style of football, the entertainment value. Mm. Do you have to look at that? Is that a criteria that's important to you, looking ahead for your new appointment? Absolutely. Look, I'm going to be looking for a manager to coach and develop a team capable of playing football from the back where possible, but they've got to have the ability to understand and, comp and cope with the physical challenges, challenges of the championship. And they've got to adapt to what each match requires. I'm not a football manager, and that's not my job, but clearly in any, in any business, any environment, you've got to adapt to what's put in front of you. So this manager is going to have to work with the club structure, bringing through players from the academy, whilst identifying transfers that are going to be available within our budgets. Um, but first and foremost, we want something where the team is capable of playing football in an attractive way. But look, it's worth remembering that the Championship is a really different prospect today compared to what the league that the club was in when I invested 10 years ago. And the promotion challenge now to get to the Premiership, even to stay in this league, it really requires a very different approach. And look, I'm up for that challenge as much as I was for the first day I was involved in 2007. But the manager, he's going to have to have a real reality check as far as the situation and his approach is concerned. And that reality is no different really from that of Huddersfield last year, us in 2015 when we reached the playoffs, or Millwall this year. So the reality of the league um, is something that they have to face up to and they have to bring attractive uh, winning football to the club. Um, and yeah, look at the top of the, the list is winning games, but equally playing entertaining football is an important part of their job. And we want to ensure that that runs from academy through to first team. But the championship, as we know, is one of the toughest leagues in the world. Uh, and I've watched many championship games, uh, many of which don't involve Ipswich, teams at the top of the league, teams at the bottom of the league. And I can assure you that a lot of those games I've watched, even with those at the top, it, I wouldn't describe it as beautiful football every time. So our own playing style in a league where so many teams have little between them um, is determined by who we're playing against, how they set up, what our injury situation is at the time. And as I said, all the way through this, entertainment's got to be high on the agenda for the new manager, but they have to have a plan B and a plan C if necessary, and they've got to know how to grind out results when it's needed. You said about the time, and I know mm. everyone wants a manager the next week and the week after the fans. There's a hundred names thrown in there. Can we just can you just give us an idea? You sort of talked about the end of May. Is that is that do you set yourself a deadline for appointment? You're right. There are a lot of names in there, and it's a it's a lot to go through. Um, I think the other couple of other important factors as well in in the decision not being rushed are that uh, there's a lot's going to happen at the end of the season. Um, and managers 
management changes anyway are going to take place at the end of the season and uh, we want to see what those changes are because there may be others that come on the list that aren't currently on the list. Um, and really, the, from the football side, our plans for pre-season, they're already in place and that's not affected by taking time to reach the right decision. So end of May, beginning of June feels right from uh, all aspects. It looks... A ma it look, to me, it looks a massive decision to make. Do you think it's probably the biggest decision you'll make or you've made as Ipswich Town owner in the last 10 years? Um, well, I mean, they've all been very big decisions. Uh, the last manager decision that we made, we were in a terrible state. We were bottom of the league in serious danger of relegation. So that was pretty important at that time. And I think... Uh, a good decision was made there by me and the others at the club that helped with that. Um, this one's just as important though, and it's a different type of manager that we need. We're in a different situation this time. Uh, but I would say they're all equally important because they all provide us with the opportunity, if the right decision is made, to take us to where we all want to go. Talked about stability has been part of your five-point plan. Is it stability in your backroom staff? You're going to bring in a manager Normally they'll bring in maybe four or five backroom staff. Where do the backroom staff stand at the moment at Portman Road? Well, I think uh, that's been one of the um, real developments and important developments over the last few years at the club is that the backroom team has developed so well. And as I said earlier, that's going to be uh, an area that the new manager is going to be able to rely upon heavily. Um, I keep... Harping back to my five-point plan, I apologise for that. It's probably a little boring for everybody if I keep going on and on about it. But you know, the point about stability there, I think, is so key within a football club. And uh, uh, the backroom team is doing a great job, and I see that as uh, being the, the case going forwards. And we're looking to continue to develop that team and keep that team in place and expect the manager to work with that team. And several players out of contract, Marcus, Teddy Bishop, Luke Himes, to name just two. What's the situation with, it, with those guys? Who's going to be making a decision on them going forward? Because obviously they're going to be as I said, out of contract in the next two or three weeks. Yeah, there's a few players. Uh, not that many, but there's a few players that we need to make um, imminent decisions on. And um, the senior football staff will make the decision on that. And uh, they will uh, be able to let me know what they think. And then if it's appropriate for new negotiations to take place to renew contracts or do whatever we need to do, then um, they will take place. So they don't need to wait for the new manager to be in place. A new manager comes in whenever at the end of month, start of June. Managers being managers will want funds to spend on new, new players. They'll have their own targets. Mm. Is that investment going to be there? I, you know, I'll, I'll push you on that one. Is the investment going to be there to fund for the, for the arrival of new players for the new manager? Yeah, I've had lots of conversations with managers about money over the years and uh, they're interesting conversations and uh, they all think they're very reasonable with their requests however however uh, they put them forward um, so uh, look I'm going to give the same answer to the new manager as I have to all the other managers in terms of being upfront and honest with them about the budgets that are available and the way that we're going to go forward and I think that uh, transparent relationship that I've had with managers um, has meant that all the managers we've had um, since I've been involved. I think have respected the relationship that they've had with me and the res respected the relationship that they've, they've had with the club. And uh, you haven't heard too many of those managers after they left the club saying bad things about the club. Um, so I will continue to give the manager all the support I can within the sort of budgets that I've made available over the, the last few years. But Let's, let's look at the squad that we've got. I mean, it is competitive. It's got a great mix of youth and experience. We've got good cover across all positions. We've got players to come back from injury. Emir's going to come back, Adi Amy, Dizelle, and even the players that have been around this season. We've had so many players with stop-start seasons. So once we get everyone fit, make a few select additions, then I think we can be in the mix next year. Um, and it is worth noting um, despite what anybody thinks, that our spend on, squad, on the squad in terms of transfer fees and on wages has been increasing each year. And um, it all comes out of one pot and players' wages can't be ignored. People will be watching this interview and they'll be saying, I'll put 10, 15, 20 million in and get us into the Premier League. That's the only chance we've got. 
how do you react to that criticism? Do you need that, that investment, that substantial investment to get in the Premier League? Look, as some of, you, as some of you know, my kids are very keen fans of the club and that question's uh, put at me around my breakfast table, around my dinner table. It's not just from fans, so uh, um, it's, a, it's, it's something that I'm acutely aware of, that everybody would like me to, to spend more money. But look, the reality is there's nine clubs this year who've got parachute payments. Uh, I think that gives them about a £90 million advantage over us. On top of that, you've got clubs like Derby, Sheffield Wednesday, they've been uh, spending tens of millions in recent years and they're still in the championship. Um, even without my investment, if you look at our revenues from gate receipts and also from the retail side, Ipswich are sort of in the middle of the championship in terms of the revenues that we generate in those areas. So when you look at the fact that our revenues are fairly average compared to other championship clubs, the other championship clubs have got parachute money then we as a club are probably more reliant on investment from the owner than many of the other clubs. And it certainly is getting harder and harder to compete financially than when I bought the club. And there is only so much that I'm prepared to commit each year. But as I promised when I bought the club, I'd invest each year and I've continued to do so and focused on paying competitive wages as part of that five point plan. And look, anyway, there's others this year that are proving that it can be done without the biggest budgets. Millwall are in the playoffs. Preston have got a good chance. Brentford aren't out of it. Some of those have probably got less budget than us, some of them comparable. We finished sixth and seventh uh, following this strategy. So I think there really is an opportunity that we can get out of this league with the strategy that we're following and with the investment that I'm putting in. You've, you mentioned the five-point plan several times through this interview, Marcus. That's clearly a key... Mm. strategy for you going forward? Yeah, look, that was well thought through and um, I do think that what we need to do is different from other clubs. Uh, every club has its, has its own circumstance, so the five-point plan really is very important. And look, we've got eight or nine homegrown players from our academy in the first team squad. Um, I think we've had more players on the pitch aged under 23 than any other club in the championship this year. And uh, we've recently given new contracts to a number of younger players. So youth definitely gets a chance at this club and it's going to continue to do so. We've spent nearly five million on the academy over the last three years. We've got great facilities. They're comparable with certainly clubs outside of the PL um, and probably equal to some even at that level. And this commitment's resulted in us with a number of young players playing at international level. Um, and I think that the stability at the manager level and in the backroom staff has helped to create the environment for those young players to come, to come forwards. And um, I'm going to be looking for the next uh, manager to, uh, to maintain that. So that investment in the academy, very important from the uh, uh, perspective of ensuring we have that stability. And look, and the competitive wages have meant we've signed players like Emir, Martin and Joe. And... Um, Players like Bursant joining us from Man City have been able to uh, join us with the budgets that we have available. Um, so all of those signings, all of those developments of academy players, that all follows what I laid out in the five-point plan. And So we can't compete financially with many of the clubs in the league and we need to find another way. And that was the basis of that plan and we're looking to follow it. Do you believe that that will be enough to take this club forward to where you want it to be, the Premier League? Well, look, I spent a lot of money in the first few years and we got nowhere. Uh, I still spent quite a lot in the last few years. And uh, for two or three of those seasons, we were very competitive, but not necessarily spending in quite the same way that I did early on. I'm not going to match what other clubs are doing that have got parachute payments. But I believe with the five-point plan, we've got a strategy that can take us to where we want to go. Though, look, I accept it's a massive challenge. You're a businessman. The attendances have dropped over recent years. That's got to concern you, isn't it? Oh, look, definitely. And um, when I raised the season ticket prices last year, that was clearly a mistake. I shouldn't have done that. Um, I mean, the reason behind it was is that we needed more revenue to compete. We still need more revenue to compete. Um, but that clearly wasn't the way to do it. And that's why I've dropped the season ticket price this year by 10% and gone to... Other sources of revenue, we've got new sponsorship next year, so looking to bring in more revenue in order to give ourselves an opportunity to, uh, to generate revenue. Um, but 
bringing the season ticket down, price down, that's not going to, on its own, bring back the fans. It's pretty simple to say, but difficult to do. We need to win football matches and we need to provide great entertainment and the fans will come back. If I could take you back in a time machine to the time when you are just about to buy the club, would you have bought it if you knew what was ahead? Look, I love this club. I'm proud to have me given the chance to run it. And look, of course I'm disappointed that we haven't been promoted. But that's football. It's a great thing about football. There's always next season. I've had a whip round in the office, Marcus. I've <laughs> prized Ian Milne's wallet open. I've got 100 million on the table now. Are you going to sell me the club? <laughs> Would I sell the club for 100 million? Look, <laughs> already I've said my annual investment in town, I think, gives us a great opportunity to challenge for promotion. We're not at the top of the investment league, but I still feel it makes us competitive. And I still feel that everything I'm doing gives us that opportunity to get promoted. We've got to spend wisely on transfers, remain competitive on wages, bring the young players through the academy. But if I didn't feel we had a chance, then yes, it would be time for me to move on. But I've got no desire to sell. I think the plan that I've got in place has a chance for success, and I want to be here to carry out that plan. But money is always going to make a difference. Um, and more money in this league, yeah, look, it would give us a better chance, particularly if it's spent wisely, and particularly if so someone came along who could do a better job, had the personal, personal and financial credentials to do a better job, I'd always do what's right for the club. Um, I suppose I'm in the fortunate personal position where I don't have to recoup the investment that I've made in the club, so I suppose, yes, look, if the right person came along, offered a better prospect for the club, um, it would be wrong for me to stand in their way. And I'd, uh, I'd have to look at that very seriously. But to be honest with you, I'm not too sure why, but I haven't seen too many Chinese or Russian oligarchs racing up the A12 over the last few years. What about the criticism, Marcus, that you use the club as a write-off against tax? How do you react to that? must annoy you a little bit, isn't it? Um... Well, look, I suppose everybody thinks there must be some method to my madness in terms of the spending. Uh, look, unfortunately, that just isn't the case, and that's not ever been part of the strategy. Um, if I look at it from a business perspective, the plan was always clear, to get promoted and make a profit. Um, as far as a tax loss is concerned, as with any business, a loss, a loss can be offset against profits elsewhere in a group. But um, from a financial perspective, in the scheme of things, you know, that, that means very little. I'm a humble journalist, not an accountant, but some people have talked about the rising debt. Isn't that debt owed to you? Yeah, exactly. I mean, I've invested each season. <clears throat> I promised a certain amount of investment to the people that were running the club before I bought it. I've stuck to that commitment. Most years I've spent more than I said I would spend, and I'll continue to do that. But yes, it only increases the debt to uh, me. You've talked through this interview about getting in the Premier League, that's your goal, that's the goal of the players, the mm. manager, the new manager and everybody at Portman Road, the fans obviously. If you don't make it as an owner and somebody else comes in and takes over and we're not Premier League club, would you see that as a, as a, a failure? A very simple answer to that, yes. That must hurt a little bit, does it? Yes. What's prompted you to face the cameras today? I've been trying to get you in front of the cameras for 10 years. You decided to talk today to us. What, what's prompted you to do that? Well, I, I didn't get involved in football to, uh, to make my opinions on football known because they're just the same as any other football fan and I'm not uh, any, uh, any qualified to any significant greater extent than any other football fan. So I always thought that it was really important that uh, my being involved with the club was certainly not about me in any way, it's about the football side of the club. Um, and I've always tried to leave it like that, that the managers uh, do the talking. But look, over this season, I think the circumstances have become different and it's become clear to me that the fans really want to know where their club is going. I just felt the time was right now for me to uh, have this interview. Now you've done one, can we, see you? can we expect to see you in the public eye a bit more? Uh, I would have thought people have probably heard enough of me for now. And uh, look, anyway, as I said, I prefer to leave the manager to do the talking. Um, from a non-footballing side, Ian Milne, uh, he attends supporters club events and talks about areas that are not relating to the, to the football side. But look, I understand supporters occasionally want to hear from me. Uh, and by the way, the programme notes that I do from time to time, they are written by me and they're from the heart. So those articles are a good indication of the way that I'm thinking. 
But going forwards, um, if I feel that my input's needed, I'll uh, look to make my thoughts widely known. Finally, there's got to be a togetherness going forward, Marcus, haven't they? What, what's your message to fans who will be watching this? Well, I mean, think, look, as we all know, this club, as with others, is nothing without the fans. The fans make the club what it is, and my responsibility, and everybody else at the club, is to make sure that Ipswich Town is at the heart of the community. And the disenchantment that's built up over the last few seasons, which is built on years of frustration, is something that I'm really determined to try and turn around. And a great start is going to be a new era with a new manager. We're going to try something different. It's going to be calculated, but it's going to be different. Let's hope it works. Let's hope it brings a, a greater togetherness for all the fans. And uh, not forgetting that football is so great because everyone has an opinion. And that debate is what makes the game. And I want to do everything I can to ensure that the debate is there, but it's a positive one for Ipswich, with everybody ultimately pu pulling in the same direction for the benefit of the team. Because one thing I can tell you that I know from all the players in the squad, that when the fans are on side, that can be the difference between getting us to where we want to go and not getting there at all. Marcus, thanks for your time.